I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of sleep and your fertility. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist in Seattle, helping people build families for over 15 years. And I love talking to people about ways they can improve their reproductive health through lifestyle changes. And a huge part of this is absolutely talking about the importance of sleep. Sleep is essential for overall health and well being. And it's something that you can absolutely work towards in order to improve not only your fertility fertility health for your reproductive health but your overall health and well-being. If this is your first time finding me on YouTube. Welcome. I am here to educate you on everything that you should have learned in a health class about your reproduction, but you didn't. <laughs> um, if you're coming back, thank you. I am so happy that you are finding information that is helping answer questions. Like this video if you learned something. Comment here with questions that you have because I get ideas about what you want to learn about with these comments. So let me know what you want me to cover and subscribe to this channel so you do not miss a video. Now, when I am talking to my patients about ways that they can improve egg quality, improve sperm quality, decrease risk of miscarriage, thinking about ways to improve chances of success with their fertility treatment, I am talking about a lot of lifestyle changes, whether it's nutrition, I have a great video here talking about that, reviewing evidence, whether it's fitness and moving your body and fertility, another great video here. I'm also always talking about sleep, so I knew I needed to add this video here because sleep is so essential. You cannot skip on sleep. And I know there is a big push in our fast paced, especially United States culture of being sort of proud of lack of sleep and sort of bragging about your ability to fully function and get all your stuff done with like two to four hours of sleep. Um, but this has got to stop because it is absolutely not helpful for your overall health. Lack of sleep has been associated with a lot of medical issues, including disordered blood sugars, increased risk of diabetes, heart disease, metabolic disorders. So many disorders can really be associated with dysfunctional sleep and lack of sleep. And I know that this can actually be very difficult for people because I know sometimes people want to sleep, but they're having trouble falling asleep. And so watching this video, I wanna go over a little bit of the evidence around the importance of sleep and fertility. I wanna go through some really good steps to improving your own sleep quality and also help you find some resources if you are trying all of these things at home and you are still not finding that you are getting a good night's sleep try and make this as a priority get the tips here to help you get started at home right away and then seek help if you are still not finding that really restorative seven to eight hours of sleep that we really should be getting each night so what does the research say the majority of research around fertility and sleep disturbances is really pretty old unfortunately and it's really focused on the impact of shift work or night shift work um, and impact of fertility. And so there's a couple of studies really sort of interviewing people on their sleep habits, their work schedules, and time to pregnancy, um, pregnancy outcomes, and that sort of a thing. Here is an interesting review article. It's from 2010 in the International Journal of Endocrinology, looking at shift work, jet lag, and female reproduction. It's a really great read if you can have access to it. It goes through the importance of circadian rhythms, some basic science research, and then a lot of observational studies looking at specifically women and menstrual cycles, um, fertility, kind of through multiple research studies. And basically they summarize and show that there really are some adverse reproductive health outcomes that can be observed if people are not getting regular restorative sleep, including menstrual irregularities, dysmenorrhea or painful periods, um, increased time to pregnancy, so taking longer to conceive, slightly higher chance of miscarriages, and even a lower birth weight in the babies when they're born. So this is a really good review article, just going through a little bit of what the evidence shows. So a lot of my patients ask whether their shift work or their night shifts will impact their reproduction. And I do have to say there are some studies that show that it does impact some people. So if that person is 
coming to me because they have infertility, because they're having irregular ovulation, um, irregular periods, having difficulty timing, trying to conceive, um, miscarriages, et cetera. It's something that we talk about, but I have to really emphasize that every person is different. So there are absolutely people that have shift work and work nights and do not have reproductive health issues. It's just that if you do have reproductive health issues and you do work really different shifts and have disruptive sleep, it's something to consider if you're able to switch talk about but there are times where people are unable to switch this work schedule and so i don't want to have people worry so much that they're doing something wrong it's just something to talk about a lot of my patients ask about whether shift work increases the risk of miscarriage and disruptive sleep and miscarriage and um, studies absolutely differ there is one small study out of europe from the 1980s looking at about 800 women who are going through shift work and the people that did conceive during the time that they were being observed, there was a slightly higher chance of first trimester miscarriage in pa the patients who had disruptive sleep, but it was not statistically significant. So if you do hear this, um, some of these theories, some of these things about it impacting infertility or impacting miscarriage risk, it does come from some basic science research, some small observational studies, and it's something to really consider and think through. And it just doesn't mean that it's absolutely impacting your personal situation, but it can for other people. And so it's something to talk to your doctor about. So what is the recommendation? Like how much sleep should we get? If you are able to, the recommendation is to get a minimum of seven to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep each night. And so that might seem impossible for you, especially if you have Know, night shift, especially if you have a small child at home um, who's waking you up in the middle of the night and you're trying to add to your family. Um, if you've got a new puppy, <laughs> my dog Oliver definitely kept us up when we got him a couple of years ago. So there are times, intermittent times in your life where you are just going to have disruptive sleep, but there are ways that you can work on something called sleep hygiene. And these are tips that sort of help you improve the chances of getting that solid seven to eight hours of sleep a night. Here are five things that I talk to my patients about who are trying to improve their sleep quality and quantity. Number one, routine and consistency are key. So if you know that you have to wake up in the morning at 7 a.m., work backwards. And so you should be asleep by 11 p.m. in order to get eight hours of sleep. If you wake up at six, you should be in bed at 10 and you can do the math. So seven to eight hours is our goal. And so you might want to try to actually be asleep around that eight hour window. So try to pick a time that you can be consistent with even on the weekends. So it's important routine and consistency are key. So if you are waking up at 7 a.m., you really should try to do that on the weekends too. I know it is wonderful to sleep in. I can't do that anymore and I wish that I could because I remember how great that felt. But honestly, getting up at a pretty similar time each morning will help you be able to go to bed that night at a more consistent time. And that routine and that consistency with the goal of seven to eight hours of sleep a night is key. Tip number two, set the scene. Make your room a place to sleep. Make it quiet, make it dark, even keep the temperature a little bit cool. Get those lights down, have blackout curtains if you are able to. You can even use a sleep mask. Having darkness when you're sleeping actually helps your hormones kick into gear and give you a better restorative sleep. Trying to be quiet is really important because you don't want to be woken up if you don't have to be. And so if you need to, earplugs, sound machine, trying to keep the noise disruption at a minimum. And then a cool uh, room to sleep in is absolutely wonderful. Something around 68 degrees is like really amazing. Maybe 70 degrees, depending on your personal situation and what's right for you, but a cooler room and kind of a blanket that you can kind of snuggle up with is going to make your sleep better. Number three, cut out devices an hour before you go to bed at a minimum 30 minutes. So that means if you're trying to go to bed at 10 PM, 
stop the screens. That means TV, that means checking Instagram, watching YouTube, <laughs> stop that. If you're trying to go to bed at 10 p.m., stop everything at 9 p.m. or at a minimum 9.30. Screens are very stimulating to our brain and are paying attention. And we want to try to move towards being asleep at a certain time. We need to shut down the screens and shut down that stimulation before we're even trying to get into bed. Tip number four, be mindful of your intake throughout the day. And I mean a couple of things with this. Number one, be mindful of your caffeine. Do not have caffeine in the afternoon. It's okay in the morning, but you really need to stop ingesting it in the afternoon and definitely not in the evening. Even if you feel fine, um, it still can have impacts on your ability to fall asleep or have restorative sleep. The other thing to be mindful of is really limit alcohol. So alcohol, especially in the evening, can be disruptive to sleep. It is a depressant, so it makes us feel sleepy, it makes us feel relaxed, but actually it is very disruptive. And if you've ever had a really heavy episode of drinking in the evening, you often will just kind of go to sleep really, really quickly, but you'll find yourself waking up in the middle of the night, whether it's to go to the bathroom because you're dehydrated, it's like pulling liquid into your bladder, or um, your blood sugar goes way down or it's come spiking way back up. Um, and so that is very disruptive. So absolutely limit caffeine, just intake in the morning, really limit alcohol and really try to avoid heavy alcohol intake in the evenings, of course. And be mindful of your food intake, like really heavy dinners, you know, heavy meals in the evening, late night snacks, that can actually be really disruptive for our sleep cycle as well. So be mindful of your intake during the day when you're trying to have restorative sleep at night. Limit your caffeine, limit your alcohol, and limit heavy meals in the evening. Number five, exercise. Moving your body during the day can actually help you have restorative sleep at night. It does not have to be some new CrossFit routine or training for an Ironman. It can be walking for 30 minutes. It can be getting on a low impact ride on your bike. It can be some really nice stretching and yoga and mindfulness. So moving your body during the day can really help your sleep at night. Those are my five main tips, but other really nice tips to think of. Go to sleep when you're sleepy. <laughs> that might sound really funny, but if you are in bed and you're just, you know, awake and just absolutely cannot even think about resting and going to sleep, try for about 10, 20 minutes. And if you are still absolutely still wide awake, get up, move around, maybe read a little something, write a little something in the journal, um, kind of like reset and then get back into bed. And it's sort of resetting that mechanism, that clock that your body to sort of relax and calm down. No screens. <laughs> so if you're getting in bed and you can't fall asleep within 10 to 20 minutes, if you get up and you're doing something to sort of reset, that does not include a screen. <laughs> My last tip is to try to find a sleep hygiene routine that works for you. It could be stretching, it could be reading, it could be yoga, um, whatever it is that kind of sets you up for success and you kind of are telling your body, I am getting ready to go to bed. I'm getting ready to get that restorative sleep. For me personally, I try to be in bed by 10 p.m. every night. It doesn't always happen, but I try, that's my goal. I try to have screens off by 9, 9.30 in order to meet that goal. Um, I do a little bit of yoga and stretching. Um, I do a little bit of relaxation, maybe some reading, but in, I really try to be in bed by 10 p.m. And I start this routine really around 9, 9.30 at the latest. Um, I hope that these tips really help you. Let's recap. Sleep is important for your overall health and well being, including your reproductive health. Shoot for restorative sleep. Try to get seven to eight hours each evening. And some tips for thinking about how to get your restorative sleep include number one, come up with a routine. Think about when you're waking up in the morning and try to get in bed seven or eight hours beforehand. Try to stick to that routine even on the weekends. Tip number two, set the scene. You want to sleep in a dark, quiet, and cool place. Tip number three, get screens away from you an hour before you're trying to go to bed, minimum 30 minutes. Tip number four, think about your intake throughout the day. Think about decreasing caffeine intake in the afternoon, 
limiting alcohol and decrease heavy meals in the evening. And number five, move your body. Exercising during the day can improve your sleep at night. I truly hope this was helpful. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have, subscribe to this channel and stick around for more learning.